Mercedes Benz, the creator of some of the most luxurious cars in the world. But not everyone can afford the most luxurious cars in the world and pay upwards of 55 to 60 lakhs for their entry level C class sedan. But what if you want to have all of that fancy jazz but you only have almost 50 lakhs to spend? This is the Mercedes A200 and this is their entry level offering in India and it's their entry level sedan in their international lineup. This is the car that your midlife crisis uncle will buy or the new kid on the block who has just inherited some crazy money or has sold a JPEG online or something for 1 crore. What we want to find out today is that is this Mercedes A200 a real luxury bargain or is this some sort of cut price tryhard in the Mercedes? series lineup. Now I'm gonna come off the bat that I am a through and through BMW fanboy. I eat, sleep and dream about F80 M3s all day, every day. So this review is already quite biased. But I totally understand why people buy Mercedes. Because, I mean, first of all, Mercedes and BMW are two very different products if you think about it. BMWs are sharp, aggressive and they're made for the people who love driving. Whereas Mercedes, they're more laid back and chill and they're more for the backseat lovers. But this A-Class limo is a different story. The C-Class, which I would say is the first real step into Mercedes royalty, is almost 137mm longer than the A-Limo and 224mm wider than it as well. While that may not sound like a lot, it actually makes quite the difference inside. The A-Class Limo is definitely not as spacious as a C, but still it is quite manageable if you're willing to adjust yourself a little bit. Now I want to take this part out of the way because it's nothing really special and it's the driving aspect of this car. I mean, the steering is okay, it's very light at low speeds and once you start going through the gears and going into higher speeds, it forms up, it's a pretty good progressive steering wheel. The suspension is really nice. Uh, I mean, it's not as nice as like a proper C-Class or a 3 Series or something like that, but it's definitely comfortable. It's much more comfortable than a 2 Series. It's as comfortable as an A3, soaks up the bumps pretty well. And when it comes to the engine, it has a, a 1.3. Yes, a 1.3. This is Mercedes' M282 engine, which is a 1.3 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine. And when I mean Mercedes, I really mean Renault Nissan because this engine has been picked up from their factory and dropped into this A class. And remember, that this in A45 guys has a 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder which is the most powerful 4 cylinder in the world. So just look at the amount of space that is left inside the engine bay. I mean I can basically fit my hand behind the engine. That's how much space there is. So this 1.3 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder engine makes around 160 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. Which is, uh, meh, it's not really that special. It's paired to a 7-speed DCD gearbox. But I have to give it to Mercedes or Nissan or Renault or whoever has made this engine. It still has that effortless feel that you get in a luxury car. But once you start going through the gears and going into the higher RPMs, you can immediately feel that the engine doesn't want to do it. And frankly, putting it into dynamic it doesn't really do much, it's just that the gearbox holds the revs much higher up and it's in gear for longer in that particular gear. And the paddles are pretty responsive and once you start actually flooring it... I mean, it's nothing really that special, I mean. It's a pretty normal luxury car feeling engine, I mean. Maybe a bigger engine I would have preferred, but I mean, who cares? Because this thing is not made for that sort of driving. But enough of this negativity towards the little A. And now I want to show you the area where this car slam dunks on the A3 and the 2 Series Grand Coupe. The interior. My oh my. This interior looks like something out of a modern art gallery. Although I am pretty sure that a modern art gallery looks much cleaner because no one touches their interior gloss black trim pieces. But apart from that, this is an absolutely stunning interior. 
So your seat controls are not actually down here, just like any other Mercedes in the range, they're actually on the door panel. So very easy to operate, just look over here and it's in the shape of a seat. So you immediately understand how to use it. All of your AC controls and everything are down over here. You have your touchpad and other infotainment and media controls over here, which you can actually also control from this uh, side of the steering wheel. So the sunroof in this car is actually pretty big for this size of a car. I mean, it goes all the way to the back seat and it actually opens up, which is pretty decent. And it gets in quite a decent amount of light, which is also impressive. Another thing that I really like about this interior is that the dials in front of you, they're first of all completely digital, they're on a screen and you can completely change the way that they look. So you have three different styles of uh, tachometers and speedometers. You have sport, you have classic and you have progressive. Apart from that, this car has quite a lot of safety features. It has uh, ESP, I mean you have your traction control, stability control, it has I think so seven airbags if I'm not wrong. Uh, then you have low collision warning system uh, which is basically that the car won't let you have a low speed crash you have a lot of other stuff i mean this car is just filled with everything but that isn't to say that the mercedes a200's interior is absolutely perfect here is a small rant from my side is it just me or am i just more accustomed to the bavarians rather than the stuttgartians but the stuttgartians also means porsche and i would love to be more accustomed to porsches anyways the thing is what i'm trying to say is that i am not really used to mercedes and their whole you know interior situation this is actually the first time i'm really driving a mercedes thoroughly and I've driven a GLA 200 before and the one thing that I hate in that car as well as in this car is the gear selector. I mean, the gear selector is a stock on the column and that is quite dangerous if you think about it. Because if you're used to driving like Japanese cars or cars which have the turn indicator on the right side of the steering wheel, while you're driving, you're going to just do this and the car is going to blow up. The drive shaft is going to go, the transmission is going to go because you're basically selecting reverse. So that's quite dangerous and I'm pretty sure Mercedes has some sort of safety mechanism in place for that not to happen. But I mean, I just feel that's a little too counterintuitive. And the main problem that I have is that in some Mercedes, you actually have the gear selector in the middle. But some of them don't have it so i don't know how that works but yeah apart from that i am in love with this interior i mean i love the way it has been laid out these two screens are magnificent the graphics are better than my tv at home uh, you can control this uh, infotainment screen from this touchpad over here as well as this left side of the steering wheel and it has these scrollers like this you have your buttons volume everything the steering wheel looks absolutely gorgeous uh, you have wood all around you have this beautiful ambient lighting i love the fact that the air conditioning ducts look like this they have the ambient lighting inside of them so that's a little cool feature and I mean, this car is just loaded with tech, to be very honest. It has something called a seat kinetics, which is like a thing when you're going around a bend, the bolsters hold you in place and stuff like that. It has a low speed warning crash system, so it won't let you have a low speed collision. I mean, it's just insane. Although there are a few more things that I don't like. For example, the build quality is not the best, especially in the middle part. When you go over bumps, like a multiple speed breakers at the same time you can definitely hear some creaking but apart from that i mean this is a lovely interior i think the mercedes a class is right in between in terms of looks between the bmw 2 series and the audi a3 now i'm considering the old audi a3 which has been sold in india and i think that's a little bit too understated and it's not that flashy Whereas the BMW 2 Series, it's look at me with its sharp creases, sharp angles and flares everywhere. Whereas this is a very understated and subtle way in terms of Mercedes design language. And I think it's pretty decent. There are a few things that I don't like. I think that the taillights are a little bit too big for the rear of the car. I am not a big fan of the front end. And moreover, my biggest gripe is that there's a lot of fakery going on here and there. There are vents on the front side of the car which are completely fake. And the worst part is that the exhaust outlets that you see on the back, they're totally fake and I think that is just unacceptable. But overall, if you think of it as a package, I think it looks pretty decent. I love the futuristic wheels. I love this paint as well. It's a very nice paint. The Mercedes A200 is a good car for the people who just got into new money. 
It gives you an essence, a hard whiff of what Mercedes has to offer, but in a way that it is a small tease to the whole capability of the brand. The tech is there, the looks are there, that X factor of owning a Mercedes is there, but it's somewhat in a way where after 2 to 3 years of your other JPEG raking in another 1 to 2 crores, you would want to trade this in for a proper C class or an E class to get that full cake.